right but before we get into the options one thing you want to do is if you don't know what options are here is a link to investo investopedia investopedia okay if you're in the chat investopedia and i'll probably provide the link in the description of this video uh, once it's been uploaded to our video sharing platforms as well as the audio on soundcloud okay and this is the page for essential options trading guide and it sort of runs you through what options are and options are basically a derivative right that you can buy which is a secondary bet on a stock where it's time it's got a time constraint on it and one option in general is equivalent to 100 shares of stock right so it's really linked up with fractional reserve banking is very much on the same level if you know anything about fractional reserve banking where banks can loan out a hundred times or more of the amount of cash they have on hand and deposit right so options you can think about as if you end up buying one option one option for a certain stock may it be puts or calls is basically gives you control over a hundred shares okay over a certain amount of time okay so that's what options are now if you're betting that a stock is going to go up they call those options calls right if you're betting that a stock is going to go down they call those options puts okay and this page has videos in there as well but let's what we'll do we'll just read the key points here okay key takeaways and by the way before we continue anymore my internet has been kicking in and out uh in the morning early morning was kicking in and out it's snowed here a lot it's cold and whatnot so if there's any interruptions of the live stream breaks my apologies sort of beyond my control and i will try to come back up again uh as soon as we can right if not today we'll continue this discussion in a future day right but here's the key takeaways from options trading and we're just going to read this from investor investopedia right so key takeaways point one an option is a contract giving the buyer the right the right but not the obligation which is extremely important but not the obligation to buy in the case of a call or sell in the case of a put the underlying asset at a specific price on or before a certain date and we're going, we're going to expand on this we'll take a look at this right point two people use options for income to speculate and to hedge risk right and when it mentions people use options for income basically those are people that are either writing uh calls or writing puts right basically what that means is if a stock is going up right and you think the stock is going to go up what you can do is sell puts short basically naked sell puts and take that money and bank it and usually you don't extend it over too long of a period usually you're selling uh basically using as a as an income basis for shorter uh time frame right because you can't really predict too far into the future in certain markets right so you can either if a stock is going up you can write puts right basically sell them without having them and because it's a time constraint instrument right derivative over a certain time it goes down to zero and if you sold it then you made money right so if you sold a put at two dollars and after a certain time the put expires you banked that two dollars and the same can be said if the stock is going down if the stock is going down you can write calls on it right if you sell a call at two dollars and the stock never goes up that call is banking the money because it's going to go down to zero right that's the income part of it speculation is just basically either writing puts and calls shorting them or buying them straight up puts and calls and betting that a stock is going to go up or down hedging risk is basically if you're got a position in a stock right and you think there might be some bad news coming but you don't want to pull out of that stock for multiple reasons one of them being 
you don't want to pay taxes right if you had a lot of gains if you sell a stock then you have to realize those capital gains right so you don't want to necessarily realize a capital gain just in case there's going to be a hiccup in the company in stock right in the price of the stock so what you can do is if you're betting the stock is going to go up and you want to lock in your profits you can buy puts which basically means that you're going to bet that the stock is going to go down for a short period of time or a long period of time it doesn't make a difference and if the stock goes down then you can sell the put and that difference right that difference you didn't really lose because the stock went down you just covered it with your put and the other way around right if the stock is going down and you think it's going to go down a lot further but there might be some news coming in that might push the stock high you might end up buying calls for it and if the stock does a bump right then you made that difference you made money off that and you can sell that and then wait until the hype is over and the stock continues its downward trend right so those are what income speculate and hedge imply right or are referring to the other point options are known as derivatives because they derive their value from an underlying asset and that should be self-explanatory because you're not really investing in something in, in a in a in a tangible asset like a stock right stock in a company you're doing a secondary bet on that thing right so for example if you see two people flipping coins right for a hundred dollars a pop right Boop, flip a coin one person's calling heads the other one's calling tails right well those people are playing for a hundred dollars a pop but the audience can make secondary bets on the flip right so a couple of other people that are watching these guys flipping a coin might decide to say hey listen i'm willing to give you two to one odds that the guy flipping a coin is going to get two heads in a row and one person may take the bet right and because that's happening the odds are more right so that person when he takes the bet he'll put a hundred dollars up and because this person gave two to one odds if the person flipping a coin doesn't get head heads twice in a row the person that offered the option right will lose two hundred dollars and the person that took uh the option bet wins the two hundred dollars and takes his hundred back right and flip it flip the flip the person does flip two uh, heads in a row the guy who put up two hundred dollars wins a hundred dollars from the other guy that's the way you, th you should think about derivatives and there's multiple layers of derivatives right the stock market is has a certain amount of value being played on it but the derivatives market is a few orders of magnitude larger than that okay it's huge so if when you see liquidity completely die out in the market it means the derivative market is being destroyed or uh, there's a lot of people making a lot of money which is usually it's a two-way trade right it does happen lonely piggy how are you doing hello chicho and chat hope everyone's having a good new year's eve so far indeed good new year's morning for me i'm eating pastries mum's pastries i'll show you guys in the in the big screen uh super delicious super delicious first time chat im lumbo im lumbo hey chicho first time chatting you live i'm interested in what family is currently invested in i am still more put puts than calls indeed okay uh im lumbo uh family right now is uh I, I forget what the percentage is there's been a lot of trading going on uh as far as uh, uh equities is concerned uh family is probably holding um 40 percent of the portfolio in equities okay uh maybe maybe let's say 50 percent of portfolio in equities okay majority of those are cannabis stocks okay because i think they've hit a bottom the family thinks they've hit a bottom okay so cannabis stocks are the majority of holdings in the family's equity position the other 50 percent is options and from that 45 percent is puts okay so about uh, not 45 percent from that 95 percent is put so basically 45 percent of the portfolio 
is in puts right now which is a huge bet huge gamble with a possibility of substantial losses but if it goes the right way possibility of gigantic returns okay that's approximately what the family's position is right now and the puts encompass uh, are encompassing some high-end fang stocks uh tech stocks as well as some uh industrials as well okay as well as some uh consumers consumer goods uh, uh textiles if you want to call it right the fourth point they have here gotcha thanks so much still have puts on twitter still have puts on twitter indeed uh sold out of uh puts uh family sold out of puts family obtained put positions in twitter when it was in the 60s and 70s low 70s and sold out in the low 50s right uh sold out a little too early but it's locked in profits twitter went down to 43 42 it bounced to around 44 and the family just acquired puts uh some more puts on it uh, this week right and since we're towards the end of the week you can guess when it was uh, early week as well as uh, later week a 44 dollar a week uh, trade and um, uh, and their longer uh, time frame because short time frame it might still pop up but on the longer basis I don't think Twitter has a hope in hell of retaining its value market cap okay possibly high gamble right the fourth point in these key takeaways is a stock option contract typically represents 100 shares of the underlying stock but options may be written on any sort of underlying asset for uh, from bonds to currencies to commodities and i've never played the uh you know uh, forex i've never played um, options on bonds currencies or commodities uh, only puts and calls as well as uh, for stocks equities as well as straddling right which is basically betting that a stock is you know is going to do movement okay that's what you're looking for when you're buying puts and calls you're looking for movement because uh with options you basically it's a time sensitive bet right the longer you hold every day that goes by you lose a little bit of your value on your options right and as you get closer to the expiry date the option value drops significantly okay so that's sort of the underlying takeaway from this and when you control 100 shares just think about it this way if you if you buy one option for a certain company you control 100 shares so if the stock price of that company does a one dollar movement you didn't just make one dollar if it's on the way up or lose one dollar on the way down you made a hundred dollars or lost a hundred dollars right if a stock if a stock moves ten dollars you control the hundred shares then that's a thousand dollars right so and there's time sensitivity in there there's um what do you call it uh, the premium you're paying for it and whatnot but that's sort of the base way you can think about it and on this page you know there's videos that you can listen to what are options and they run you through it uh, options as derivatives calls and put options call call option example more videos put option example and you can go through it um, buying selling calls and puts buy call sell call and all these things that you can do and then secondary hedging your bet straddling whatnot so there's a whole bunch of information there and i'll link it up just in case anybody uh, has popped in uh, more recently okay 